This is part two of our gravity flyer build. We're going to wire up the motors today, our high voltage circuit. We're also going to run the wires for our ultrasound. We will not hook in the ultrasound circuit today. I'm going to put in here some STL files so you can build these parts for the high voltage where they connect to the disc. We're also going to cut some metal today so we can make our little uh, tabs that go onto the disc for the high voltage. And we're going to clean it all up and you should have a nice clean look just like this when we're done. We're going to go ahead and glue in our piezoelectric disc now. We're just using some contact cement. We're going to put a little bit in here, not too much. We don't want it to run over the sides when we put the disc in. We just want it to fit in there good. As you can see, not too much, just enough that it's going to hold it in there. There you go. Now, you could probably just set it there and it might be just fine. What I'm actually going to do once I have it centered out, I'm going to put this little uh, washer right here. Now, this is just something that goes on a car battery. It's just foam, or not foam, but you know what I mean, felt. Anyway, that way it just stays in there without touching the wires and busting them. And then I'm just going to take a, uh, a socket here and set it on top, get a big enough one. It just holds it in place. That's all we're trying to do here. I just don't want to move it around. I want it to stay centered when I put it in there. And then huh, I'm going to find some place to put this thing. That way it stays that way for a while. So I'm just going to hook it right here on the side. And leave it overnight. And it should be good in the morning to work on everything we need. We're going to go ahead and solder up our high voltage tabs and connect them. So as you can see, I already bent the piece of copper. All I need to do now is put on some solder there so we can solder a wire to it later. Now you're going to have to do this for a minute. It's going to get hot. Your fingers may get a little warm, but you're going to have to deal with it. Or just clamp it to the table, whichever you prefer. I just, I'll do it this way, man. It's not that hot. Anyway, you got to get enough on there so that when you put your wire to it, you have enough solder. Make sure you prep your solder on the wire as well. Now we put extra solder on our tip there so that we can flow it. And... This is going to take a few minutes to get this to go on there, but since we already put solder on the copper, it should go a little faster. It's just lining it up that sometimes is a problem. There we go. We get that solder to flow on there. Just set it for a minute. And there we go. Good to go. Tug on it. Make sure we're good. Expect the solder joint. Now that we're all good on soldering, let's go ahead and look at the strip here. I just cut this strip out of a piece of copper. So we're going to have to go ahead and clean it up, bend it, and then uh, file it down a little bit. Try to keep as many smooth edges as we can on it. So as you can see, we're just bending the end there. It'll become important later when we hook it in, you'll see what it's for. But you have to bend one in like just like this. And there you go, you got a nice curve in it. We got a nice bend in it. We're going to take a file to all the sharp edges here and try to get rid of them. And we'll go ahead and probably clean up those holes as well. Uh, and that way we can hook it all together. Now that we have our copper filed down and cleaned up, all we have to do is attach it to these new 3D printed parts and it's just two bolts. And once you have them all tightened down here, we'll just go ahead and take a look at what this is supposed to be. And there you go. That's the part, that's the way it's supposed to be built. And then we'll hook it in. 
So we're going to hook it in right here. There's only one spot this thing can go. So it should be pretty easy to identify. Sorry, my big hands are in the way. But all you got to do is put it up under there just like that. You see the two bolts coming through. You put them in. You put the nut on there. And you're good to go. As you can see, the little tab goes right there to the plate. And that's where our high voltage is going to go in. Now that we have our high voltage tabs in there, we got our wire hooked to it. We need to put a few more holes in our gravity flyer. One right here for the high voltage line. Now you can go a little bigger on this one. I try to keep it as tight as I can. But it is sharp metal, so do what you think is best. And then we also need one right over here for our motor. So we'll go ahead and put that one in as well. And here we go. We just put this last one in right here. Now this one you may want to go a bit bigger on. Just because there's going to be several wires going through it. Now that we have our hole drilled, let's go ahead and feed this wire through. Again, this is a high voltage line. So we'll just feed it right down through here. Again, make your determination if you want the hole just a little bit bigger, but it looks like we're okay here. It just takes a minute to feed it through. Make sure we don't get caught up in anything. And we'll probably just take, uh, we'll just take this right here and we'll tie it off. Just on the corner, we, you can do it any way you want. Look, I just like to put it right here on the corner so that it stays in place. I just want to address this real quick before we go on any further. I am using 16 gauge wire. Yes, it's not meant for high voltage. Yes, I'm worried about the bleed over from that to anything else. However, when I look at the photos of the original gravity flyer, this is what they are. This is this wire right here. It's not a high voltage wire. Doesn't have plenty of fat shielding all around it. So, yeah, I'm worried about those things just as much as you're worried, but I'm trying to stay as close to the original as possible. Now that our high voltage is done, we're going to go ahead and work on our motors. We're just going to cut the tip off here. We won't need that anymore. We're going to go ahead and split the wire here. This is all going to be pretty simple. We're just going to strip wire. We're going to prep it with some solder. We're going to put on some shrink tubes as we do this today. That way everything looks nice and clean. So here we go. We'll just wrap this on here so it doesn't go anywhere. Strip this back. And here we go. That's just tedious work, guys. I'll show it to you this time on how I do it, and then I'll try to pass through it a little faster on the next one. But for people who haven't done this before, I just want to make sure that it's in here so that you know what you're doing. That's it. Clean off solder tip. Put it down. Get our little shrink tubing here. Come in a strip like this. I usually cut it about this long. And there you go. I got one. Cut the other one to the same length. There we go. Probably what? A little less than an inch. Probably three quarters of an inch. Something like that. Put it over the top. Now, it's important. Make sure you slide these back a little ways. What, what you don't want is you don't want it to start to shrink down when you're soldering your wires together. So on this, you just want to get a little bit on there so that when you put these two together, since they're both prepped, it'll make the slaughter, excuse, excuse me, make the solder flow easier. So. And there you go. It's done. Pull on it. We're checked. We're good. Go to the other one now. I'm going to wire this red to red. And white to black. That way we know what the red one is. We know what the black one is. With these motors, they're not typical DC motors. 
they will not run in reverse. I tried it, and I don't know why. But anyway, there you go. There's that. We're just going to put the shrink tube over it now. Now, on this, when we do shrink tubing, usually you get the heat gun out and you use it. Some people use a lighter. I just use it, our uh, tip here. Just make sure you don't go onto the wire. The wire will melt pretty easily. Shrink tube is pretty resistant. It'll be easy. So just get it on there. Get it tight. And there you go. This is just faster, guys. That way you don't have to worry about wires melting. People using the wrong shrink tube and overheating it. And I can run this along here as much as I want. So we'll get this other one done here real quick and we'll put this out of the way. You may want to just for your guys' sake when you solder this stuff wait to put the shrink tubing over it and shrink it down like this just until you check all the wires and make sure everything runs properly. What you don't want to do is go back and have to recut this and redo it. Especially when you're wiring everything in. It really sucks. So just Test it all out before you shrink tube it. I've been doing this a long time, so I'm just going to keep rolling with it. And that's pretty much it. There we go. We just got to now take the wire, and we're just going to feed it down to it. Now, if you really wanted to make this look pretty, you can put another piece of shrink tube over the whole thing, over both joints. I don't feel it's necessary. Some people do. We'll put the wires down in here. Again, this hole you may have wanted to have it a little bit bigger because we got a couple more wires for the ultrasound that have to go down that same hole. So this is pretty much straightforward and we're good to go. Now like the other side, we're just gonna go ahead and add a zip tie to this and make it stay right where we want it to until we uh, decide what we want to do with it and clean it up. And that's pretty much it. For our piezo disc, all we're going to do is solder red to red and then black to white. That way we keep the red consistent throughout the whole build. We know which side is red and which side is black. Now that our piezoelectric piece is dry, let's go ahead and put on the cap. Now you'll see I have the wires over here to the high voltage side. I went ahead and changed that. So I want to go out to the motor side. Once that ultrasound cap is on the top, you feed the wires through. And here we go. Just make sure you mark which one's the ultrasound and which one's the motor. Pretty simple stuff. Before we went any further, I just wanted to tell you which wire we were using. Sorry I didn't do it earlier. It's 20 gauge wire. It's for a doorbell. It's solid inside, not frayed wires. And uh, it's because what he used on his original gravity flyer, here's the picture of his original. You can see the wires in here. They're actually for a telephone cable. It's what they, they're for. Uh, and as you can see, they're the same type of wire. So that's what I used. Two other items I used. Here's the shrink tube that I used today. And here is the piezoelectric disc. I'll leave links in the description for everything. Now that everything on the top is done, let's go ahead and move on to the bottom portion of this. We're going to get our other motor hooked up now. These are the two wires that came from our motor on the top. We're going to go ahead and splice this wire in. And we're going to connect these two motors to it as well. Now I know some of you may want to run individual motors. That's fine. Go ahead and just add another wire here. And instead of connecting these together, just connect those motors right there down to your driver. So you'll have to have two drivers. I'm only going to run one. I believe actually you only ran one. So that's what I'm going to do here. So we're doing the same as the top. Cut it right there. Let's go ahead and cut the other one. That's our wires to the top. Let's strip them back and let's solder them in. When you get to doing these wires, when you put three together, it gets a little tricky. So what you want to do is wind the wires together. 
That way the two ends of it stays together and it's easier to solder. Otherwise, it's just going to be horrifying for you. So here we go. We prepped them both. We just laid a little solder on there. Double check. Make sure they're hooked together. We'll throw a little more solder on there. And let's line these up real quick. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to get this part here. But, you put it on there, just make sure it flows all the way through. Once it does, you're good to go. Now we just unwind our uh, wire there a little bit. You see that I bent them right there. It's because I didn't want the shrink tube anywhere near it when I was soldering it. Anyway, there we go. We just put that shrink tube on again the same way. So, pretty clean, easy, makes it good. Now, if you want to put in another motor wire set, you may want to use something else, a quick connect or something here, just so you can wire and unwire. If you want two different drivers for two different motors, again, mine are wired the same. Top and bottom are wired together on these uh, little fan motors here with one controller. So, Again, that's up to you. But make sure you wire the other side. Again, keep their same theme. Red is to red always. And then uh, whatever color you got left is hooked to the other one. Pretty simple, pretty easy. This way you don't need a wiring schematic. I'm trying to show you guys it's one-to-one -one wiring here. This isn't uh, something I need to write a schematic for on this one. I'm sorry, but I'm not, I'm not doing it for one-to-one -one wiring. So here we go. And just solder that on there, and we'll shrink that up. Again, hook those two together. It makes it easier. Put the solder on there. Get it lined up. And boom, put it on there. Just make sure it flows. Try not to leave any sharp points on it. Pull it. Make sure it's good. There we go. Shrink tube it. And there we go, shrink it up and we're good to go. And this part is done. We now have all of our motor wires connected and they're ready to be run out. We have our ultrasound wires that came to the top and we have our high voltage wires. So we're about ready to put these all to the bottom piece. So let's finish this up and we'll move on. Now that all the wires are in, we're going to put it in our bottom dome. Everything's got to feed through it. So, including the high voltage wires. And we're going to set up the high voltage on the bottom the same way we did the top, by the way. I didn't show that, but you can see the piece sitting there. And this is just a fun process, guys. It just takes a few minutes to get it through there. One tip, if you have any uh, extra PLA that's in there that's messing things up, just take your soldering iron, whip it around, it'll clean that right on out. And then you have to clean off your soldering iron. But uh, you use a sponge, it usually works pretty good. Anyway, you got to feed this through and it's just going to cap right on there. As you, you can see, I have the rest of it pulled off. It's easier to put the caps on before the other ones. Just don't tighten them down all the way or else you're going to have problems. So anyway, that's pretty much what you got to do here. Feed this through here and it should be pretty good when you're done. It'll make a clean look out of it. Now, I know the original one, everything was tied in with little tie-ins here. Since we soldered and shrink-tubed everything, we don't have to go through that. It's all solid wire all the way through. This is the motor driver I'm going to use. It's just a 12-volt power pack that's adjustable. The power pack runs 12 volts and 5 amps. So hopefully 5 amps is going to be enough for this. For those out there who want to run a different setup, Here's another one that I have. It's just a simple motor driver and we have a 3D printer power source here and it's 12 volts and 20 amps. So there's plenty to run anything you want. Although I think if I put 20 amps into these motors, they'll fry, but it's available if we need it. Let's go ahead and hook in our power pack here. 
this is going to be fairly simple we'll just take off our little twist tie and we're going to cut the end off here I like to save the ends in case I need them for something else but let's just cut it off and then we're going to strip back the outside shielding here and there we go we got two wires looks like a uh, red and a black let's go ahead and clean those up right here and we're again we're going to keep with the same theme we've been keeping with red to red and then black to whatever other color is left I believe it's white here so let's just find the one that we mark motor there we go good thing we marked it because it's a pain if you don't you got to trace it back and well that's just horrifying so let's get this done again we need some more shrink tubing in this one now guys you can always use electrical tape for all these connections but a lot of people just like shrink tube because it's easier your choice now one thing I will say again on this before you shrink tube this one make sure that both motors are running it's a real pain to go back and try to troubleshoot something and then cut off shrink tubing and everything else so just do yourself a favor make sure everything's running before you shrink tube these in so alright let's see if I can't get this done any quicker on here sometimes it takes a while man I, you may be watching a short video but this is hours and hours of stuff moving cameras and stuff but that's alright it is what it is Again, here we go, red to red. And we are good to go, it looks like. And black to white. And that's it, guys. That's all it takes to hook one of these things in. It's very straightforward. Again, shrink tubing, I'm going to go ahead and check it and make sure it runs before I shrink this down. Now, all the motor wires are run. Everything's connected. Let's give it a run. Let's see how we did. There we go. We got some counter rotation. Yes, the discs are a little wobbly. We haven't adjusted those out yet. Let's see if they smooth out as we run them. That top one's pretty close. The bottom one's pretty close. Yeah, I think they're flat. I think I need some adjustment in the heights on each side, but I think we might be all right with that. Let's take a look a little more. Yeah, they're spinning good, doing counter rotation. We got good speed. Again, we're not going to get a whole lot of speed. This isn't going to crank up to several thousand RPM. The top one will move a little faster once I put the magnets on the bottom, but we're looking pretty good here now that the motors are spinning well let's move on to our high voltage what I did here is I just took the negative of this thing and I connected it to our black wire it's the negative and then as you see I soldered it and we went ahead and put the shrink tube on it this is really easy to define you see it right coming out of the uh, bottom of the flyback there's no other wire that comes out of there so that's pretty self-explanatory the white again remember that was on our top part so we need to put some solder on that and then we're going to hook it to the top part of this thing Now there's this big piece on the end here. We won't need that at all. We'll just chop that off. Then what I like to do is run one bigger than what I should here. I don't want to cut any of the high voltage in the inside wire off. So 
There we go. We started with one, didn't work, pulled it. Let's go a little more. Sometimes when you get them too tight, it, it pulls off all the strands of wires. And with this, I just want every strand in there. So it's better just to take the time. Now we're going to go ahead and solder this one up. Again, put a little piece of shrink tube on here. The shrink tube I have is not big enough to go over that red wire there, so I'll show you what I do here. It'll work out. Again, we're putting that shrink tube on right here, and it's too small, so I ran it butt up against the red wire there, and I'm just shrink tubing it. Now that's done, we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of tape on here. Again, just some electrical tape. And as you can see, I'm far short of that wire, but it's up in there. And we're just going to use some tape. Now I do this on the, the hot side or the positive side. Only because I don't want any leakage right there. Uh, not where I'm sitting. I just want it nice and clean. So if you want to get a bigger piece of shrink tube you guys go right ahead. But this is kind of what I'm doing. Anyway, we'll finish that part up and let's go ahead and wire the rest of it. Now let's work on the other side of this flyback here. It may look intimidating, but it's not. It's simply four wires. The two middle wires connect together. And they go right there in the center slot. I soldered mine. You don't have to solder yours. If you're worried about high voltage melting any of the solder on this, guys, it doesn't get hot enough to do it. So, don't ever worry about that. I don't like frayed wires. They irritate me. So, it, when you keep shoving them in and out of these things and working with them, they just make a mess. So, I like to solder it. Have it nice and tight in there. Now, the left wire there, as you can see, will go right there in that little hole. Like I said, it's pretty much straightforward, but I like to show people just so that they can see it and they feel comfortable doing it. So the last one here goes in the last hole. And this is pretty much it, guys. Then you just got to hook in a power source. And at this point, I didn't know if I wanted to run 12 volt or 24 volt, so I didn't add a power source in here. Most likely, I go 24 volt on a... Uh, adjustable voltage source just like the power pack I use to drive the motors anyway that's it those are the wires there we go outside to outside center to center and it's pretty much done now that we got everything complete let's go ahead and take a look at everything again high voltage wire looks good we have our ultrasound wires here they look good we have our motor wires, they're good. Ultrasound in there. Those look good, those little tabs, that worked out really well for us right there. Again, on the bottom, our wires came right through there. Again, see how many wires went through there, so we needed that extra little bit from that drill bit. And there we go, we got the wires coming out the bottom, so we're all, we're all put together now. And right here, I gave it about six feet of wire, so you know, because I want to stay away from it just a little bit, give it a little room to lift, and uh, yeah, I got to put the magnets on there. I had ordered them, and they were taking a while to get here, so I just got to add those now. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied so far with where we're at. It looks pretty clean. I went ahead and zip-tied things off, shrink-tubed them. Again, you're welcome to do any more to it than you want to. 
yours is your own personal thing mine's this way it's good for a lot of testing and uh, anyway it looks pretty clean and I'm pretty satisfied with this portion next time we'll work on the ultrasound I'll build the circuit and put it into this and then we are gonna hook up our Tesla coil as well and we are pretty much set to go we're ready to test if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and have yourself a great day.